Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video, we'll be covering the beam column joins. This tool is not one that I've used all that much, but I'll tell you what, it sure does come in handy when I do use it. Um, I've What I've got out, laid out here are a few different conditions. Um, all the way on the left here, we've got a basic concrete system. We've got a precast system. Then we've got a steel system and a timber system here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the beam and column joins tool and go through these different joining scenarios and see what we get, see what different options we have when it comes to beams and columns. And with that said, let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing I'll say is I'm not gonna go over how columns join because it's kind of a pain. I've never used it, and from what I know, it only works with slanted columns. And I don't know about you, maybe you've used slanted columns more than I have, but I primarily use vertical columns, and you could see different types of columns that go into columns, and you've, you've got an option to choose between vertical and slanted. Like I said, I typically just use vertical. Nine times out of ten, they're going to be vertical on my side, and so when it comes to the beam column joins tool, it's it's not going to be so useful for columns, at least in this video. So, but that said, we will use it for some beam joins for sure. So, when we first click on it, we are prompted with different options for showing us different joining conditions. And as you can see, most of my Revit screen has grayed out which is actually kind of nice because what is not grayed out is the are these different beam joins and these, the specific beams that we can start to affect with this tool and that's very helpful and you can see as I start to check and uncheck these boxes up here I begin to lose the different options of being able to affect these different types so if you're only trying to target a specific type of structure you'll want to uncheck some of these but for the sake of this video I'd like to keep them all checked because we want to start to affect them all so immediately you can see that this basic concrete system there are no joins there, there's nothing to do because of how concrete comes together you can simply use the join tool and so there's no real reason for this special beam joins tool so let's get in here and see what we see when we look at this precast system. So the the main thing is what is still darkened are the beams that you're able to affect. And really the only difference is that there are now these arrows that show up at the ends of these beams where they will join. And by using these arrows we can start to affect the different joins and different options. You'll also notice that I, I can't select anything else. There's no way I can do anything, and nothing even highlights until I hover over these arrows. And what these arrows say are change beam status. And initially that sounds kind of weird. What is the status of a beam? Well, it's, it's just a beam. But in this case, when it comes to the joins, the status itself is which one has priority, which one's out in front. I'm, I'm, I'm using this terminology to... to make it seem a little easier to understand because beam status itself doesn't make a whole lot of sense so as I start to change the direction of these arrows it's going to basically give one beam the priority or over another so let's start affecting these arrows so let's change this arrow from facing forward towards the join to back and immediately we see a very nice join tool a uh, very nice join, not join tool. The tool itself will join. So as, as we have made these two beams uh, in the pro basically change the status in each beam to give them the proper priority, we get this nice looking miter. And now I have the option to hover over this. We can see it says create or remove a miter lock. I can actually lock in this miter if I want to. And I know that's going to stay, but I'm actually not going to do that. But I'll, I'll go back, and even, even as I hover over these arrows now, you can see we have that miter through this, this beam, through these two beams. 
So let's change the status back here. And as I pull it back, you can see it's almost, in a way, unjoining. And let's pull this one back as well. And when I pull them both back, they're both almost waiting to be joined, attempted to be joined, but they're, they're absolutely not joined. So let's go back and I will give them both priority and actually in the in the tool by pressing escape and then we're left with that nice miter. So that's something to note as well. If you want a clean miter join in beams, you'll need to give you'll need to change the status of each beam to the furthermost priority, if that makes sense. So let's go on to the steel here and I think the steel will make the most sense given how it looks in 3D. So with nothing selected, I'm going to go to the Beam Column Joins tool, and we're, we're going to again see these arrows come into play. And as we highlight over the arrows, we can see which one has priority and which one doesn't. So to me, based on the direction of the arrows and the beams, you can see that this beam has priority, if you will, and this beam does not. So what will happen as I give this beam priority is they will both have priority and attempt to join through a miter. So let's click this here and see we have a nice clean miter right there. That's of course probably what you want if you have this type of 90 degrees in your beams. I'm going to undo that and we'll get back to this in just a second and move on to the timber system. Again, you can see that this, this beam here has the priority. I'll push it back and we see that neither beam has priority and you're left with this empty void here which is probably not so desirable. So I'll give each one of them priority again. You can see that arrow's lost in the line. Give them both priority and we have this nice miter again right there. That's great. So I'm gonna go back to this steel beam system again and let's start to change it just a bit and see how far we can push this tool, the beam joins tool. So just for the heck of it, I'll go to a top view and I will start to change the angle of this beam attaching to the other beam. So we have a greater than 90 degree angle. So let's go back to our beam joins tool and again, because we have these arrows presented to us, we can actually use the tool and attempt to join. So it appears through the arrows that this beam has priority. Let's click on this beam and see if we get a nice miter. Sure enough, we've got a miter. And even though it's a greater than 90 degrees, it, it's, it works out very nicely. It gives us a very clean miter. So let's, I'll note that I did not lock in that miter. So let's take that a step further. Um, Whenever these two beams are connected at the endpoint, my guess is that we will definitely have these joins work. The, basically, the tool will work and we'll be able to join these. Yes, and as you can see, the arrow, I'm prompted with these arrows, meaning that if I click this and give them both priority, we'll get a nice clean join. But for the sake of this test, let's remove the priority. I'll exit the tool and move this beam beyond the endpoint of the other and we'll see if we're prompted with any sort of join option through this type of condition. And let's click on it, and sure enough, I don't have that as an option because these two beams are not connected in any way. So that's very nice. Let's see how far we can press this. And again, Revit is very nice, and it's gonna keep that join almost no matter what. By the time I even get the beam on top of it and rotate it around, I still have this beam. So in a way, this is almost an indestructible join, which I definitely love and use all the time for this joining. Uh, something to note with concrete is that while we do have the miter here, um, this is precast concrete, precast. Obviously, we don't want these overlaps. We It looks kind of weird, and it's most likely not going to be built this way, even with the column there. So we can simply go to the join tool, and because it's concrete, we can join these things together and get some nice, clean looking beams and conditions once again. That's very nice. And even this, even this endpoint over here, right there. I'll go into one final thing. I'm gonna go to level two because I have these beams on level two. 
and let's go I'm going to exit of course we're not seeing I'll go to the site tool and of course we can see everything that's great you'll notice these beams are kind of funny it's because I have my coursing set to course and not fine once we have fine we can see them all again I'll show you another way in which you can achieve a join through uh, the beam joins tool but it's not technically through the tool it's just achieving the same effect so let's I'll, I will disjoin this and I will push these two beams to be clearly intersecting over the top and maybe we want this nice clean join and maybe we want it to be mitered as well generally speaking you're able to just use the beam column joins but because we have this weird condition of overlapping we just can't do it and I, I don't know a condition that you might have something like this but if you do still want to achieve that that miter you can go to architecture we can go to reference plane and we can draw a reference plane between each of these two points and just for the sake of being able to see it I will extend it beyond and now we can go to the modify tab and go to the cut tool and we can select the area of the beam that we want to keep and then select the reference plane and there you can see we have that nice cut through that reference plane again I'll do the same thing with the other beam and we have this nice miter now this is this is very again this is very situational I would not go about using this all the time just because you're left with a bunch of reference planes to manage and everything it, when it comes to this join though it's not technically a join when it comes to this cut it's all based on the reference plane so as I move this beam I will keep the join but it it's not clean because the beam is technically moving I'll undo that and you'll see how this cut is in a way a slave to the reference plane. So I'll actually rotate this reference plane by just by 10 degrees. And you can see, yes, we, we have this cut still working out. Like it's doing its job, but it's not accounting for the fact that we have two beams that are the exact same beam type coming together. It almost doesn't matter to Revit because each one is being cut by the reference plane that's it there's nothing else going on so that's I would use this only in very specific situations but nine times out of ten I'm going to want to go and use the beam column joins tool if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out please like and subscribe there will be a lot more videos coming out when it comes to Revit tools I've got plenty of plans when it comes to Dynamo I'm gonna really have a a large series when it comes to materials in Revit. It's definitely a passion of mine. It's something I've spent way too much time on. So if you did learn something in this video, please like. I really appreciate it. If you did not learn anything, please comment below and let me know what you would like to learn. I appreciate all your views and comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.